Well, he did it. I, uh, Elon Musk has terminated a large portion of the Twitter staff. The news is currently breaking, but it appears that the Twitter curation team has been completely eliminated. The entire team. These are the people they claim were tackling mis and disinformation, and now they're gone, providing deeply important context. Also included in this are members of the moderation team. They're gone. Well, content moderation, I think it's hard to know exactly what they're saying. They're saying over at Politico that some people on the moderation team are gone, but the curation team is also a moderation team and they're completely wiped out. So uh, it's happening, my friends. This is a special Friday live edition of the Tim Pool YouTube channel daily show, I guess. And uh, I got to say, when the news is breaking and too intense, I it's got we, we got to do it live. That's what we're doing. So feel free to smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. We got a new song that just came out over at LosingMyMind.com. Link is, is in the description below. We have all of your favorite media personalities dancing like puppets, singing the song for us. But uh, I just put out a video on this on my uh, Timcast News channel, which is my other uh, uh, sort of like opinion monologuing channel. And then on, on this channel, we typically do like uh, more straightforward news analysis, looking at polls and data and things like that. But the news is just too intense today with the Elon Musk termination of all of these staff. And after I recorded this video, we now have the emails themselves leaking. So this is probably the biggest story happening right now that will have a very serious impact on the election. And I'll tell you why. As much as this segment, this video is starting off about Elon Musk and Twitter, we have a really interesting story emerging where NBC News put out new details about Paul Pelosi, in which in a video on TV, They say that when the police arrived, Paul politely greeted them and then walked back towards the assailant who then all of a sudden hit him. They deleted the video and issued a correction saying it wasn't up to their standards. So maybe it's just they put out fake news. I wouldn't be surprised. But the reason I'm I'm saying these stories are are somewhat connected. Well, I wanted to talk about the Paul Pelosi thing and then go deep into this story about what's what's going on. And we don't know a whole lot. The official narrative is that some guy broke in. But the story is getting stranger and stranger as the police and the media keep changing it. But this was the purpose of Twitter's curation team. The curation team would make sure this would not happen. And they would take that video and then put a big old label and be like, this is not true. It's completely fake news. Never happened. The weirdest thing about Twitter's curation team and their moderators is that I'd often see stories that said things like, The video of Donald Trump doing a backflip is fake. And I'd be like, yo, bro, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I read the news 24 seven. There would be stories in their what's happening tab. And it would be like, fact check. Donald Trump did not save a bag of puppies from a burning building. And I'd be like, dude, I didn't even see that video. Why are you sending this to me? It's because the goal is manipulation and propaganda. And Elon Musk has absolutely terminated this group of people. So here's what I want to do for you, my friends. I want to show you the emails that got leaked. And uh, one says you're fired, one says you're safe. And then we'll talk about what's going on because, you know, look, as as uh, uh, we're, we're uh, sitting here with this live stream rolling, my friends, we have new updates coming in from The Guardian. Twi- uh, um, former Twitter staff are tweeting about what's going on and it's all happening in real time. And you gotta love it, don't you? So my friends, don't forget to smash that like button right now if you haven't already. Subscribe to this channel, share the show with your friends, and most importantly, let me just pull up very quickly this. Head over to losingmymind.com and take a listen to our new song, Genocide, Losing My Mind. We've got a uh, good old Ian Crossland in there. We've got uh, Taylor Lorenz. We got Cuomo. And, uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to give away too much, but the song's been up. It's got like a hundred and some thousand hits already. We've got uh, somewhere in here. Here we go. Alex Jones hacks the broadcast, takes over. Check it out. You can buy the song on iTunes. We're already apparently number six in only a couple of hours and uh, quickly rising. So I'm, I'm really excited for this. The song itself entirely just mocks the establishment, the media, the liars, and we make them sing the words that criticize themselves. In verse three, we have Taylor Loren singing about how she's a liar. I'm really excited about that one. And the reason, uh, you know, I wanted to have her and a bunch of other people in it especially with this verse, is because she lied. She lied. She doxed libs of TikTok. That directly involved me. I was calling her out. And so it's kind of following up on that stuff. So again, smash that like button. Subscribe to this channel. All that good stuff. 
Here's what we got from The Guardian. Of course, I will be reading your super chats in this Friday live segment, which uh, may become more frequent, but I got to be honest, it may also be just because we're entering the midterms. A bunch of crazy news is happening, but I want to make a point too. News breaks on Friday a lot. Why? It's where bad news goes to die. When, well, I'll say this. We put out a song on Friday because that's when Billboard begins tracking the analytics. So share the video if you really want to support us. Buy the song. They're tracking all this stuff. We, uh, we're we hoping, and we, I, I, think, I think this song is going to do way better than Only Ever Wanted simply because, well, it's a, it's, a, it's a bouncier song and all this stuff. We put that on a Friday for a different reason, but as for this story about Elon Musk, he probably did these layoffs because many people don't want to work on Friday. So Friday releases are where news goes to die, which means may actually be um, conducive to a live version of, of this show because you have such tremendous breaking news on Friday so often they want stories to, to die. Uh, and that being said, it, it often is hard to source separate stories because what happens is the media will put out almost nothing because everyone's lazy and they're like, it's Friday, I want to go party. But then a big story will break or a press release will drop. So you have like one big story, but then nothing else. So, you know, it is what it is. So anyway, losingmymind.com, smash the like button, share the live stream right now, wherever you can, if you really want to really help out. Here's the story. Let's go through a few of these. And I want to read you the emails and then talk about fake news. And again, take your, uh, your super chats. Elon Musk reported to have fired Twitter curation team responsible for tackling misinformation. I love it, don't you? Here we go. This is great. 1131 Eastern Daylight Time. Musk fires Twitter curation team tackling misinformation. There is as yet unverified speculation that Elon Musk has fired Twitter's curation team, which is responsible for countering misinformation posted to the social network. Now, this has been reported by several different outlets, so I think it's, it's probably true. But I, I say probably because... Until Elon says something, you know, we don't have direct confirmation. The claim comes on Twitter, naturally, from Richie Asseli, a digital producer for the Toronto Star, who says he previously worked as a member of the curation team. Interesting, really? They had journalists with direct access to their platform. Look at that collusion. How about that? Asseli says team leads, management and curators are all posting that they have been fired. The move, if true, will make Twitter noisier, more dangerous, and less interesting, he asserts. Wrong. Not true, my friends. These were the folks, the folks, who tackled misinfo, contextualized conversations via the Explore page, and helped make Twitter an unmatched source for breaking news. This will make Twitter noisier, more dangerous, and less interesting. I disagree. Twitter's curation team ran a fake story about me for weeks and had no merit The story debunked itself, and for some reason, even though nobody cared, Twitter decided it was a relevant story. Why? Because these people are in cahoots. Over at Twitter, they're working not just with the DHS, but with journalists to lie, cheat, and steal, and manipulate. Musk, in his tweet blaming activist groups for pressuring advertisers to withdraw from Twitter, causing a massive drop in revenue, insisted nothing has changed with content moderation. All right. Well, apparently there's an there's an update here. So let's refresh and see what we have. Uh, I guess that's it. OK, here we go. We So this is the pinned uh, uh, tweet from uh, uh, post from three hours ago. Civil liberties groups. Musk reneged on content moderation promises. Oh, heavens. Leaders of two civil liberties groups who sat with Elon Musk earlier this week say he has gone back on the commitments he made at the meeting. On a Friday call in which advocacy groups urged brands to pull advertising from Twitter in response to mass employee layoffs, Color of Change President Rashad Robinson and Free Press co-chief executive Jessica Gonzalez said they left their conversation with Musk believing he was he was genuine in his commitment to be transparent about content moderation policy changes, as well as to keep election integrity policies in place. I will pause there and just point out Elon Musk tweeted today that he's losing uh, massive amounts of revenue. Because activists are attacking advertisers and they're pulling off the platform. They're going to say, but Robinson and Gonzalez both say his actions have betrayed his words. Specifically, Gonzalez said Musk assured the advocacy groups, including the Anti-Defamation League and National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, that that those responsible for election moderation would regain access to the proper tools by Friday. Gonzalez says today, today's Friday. And instead of and instead, a lot of these people are gone. So I don't have a lot of confidence that we can trust what he says. You know, I just I just want to say, I don't care. 
Uh, I, I don't care what you think. Gonzalez from the free press, the free press. Yes, they advocated for banning Alex Jones. Why? What's a free press? Is a free press only approved voices get to speak? That's not a free press. So if like you came out and told me that you were a fireman and you were wearing your gear and I was like, oh, look, you know, I like firefighters. No, 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 no. no. I didn't say fire fighter. I'm a fireman. And then you like pull the lever on a hose and it sprays. It's a flamethrower. I'd be like, yeah, okay. I don't really care what you have to say about fighting fire. You are the opposite of what you claim to be. But you love to see it, don't you? Keep crying, everybody. Here we go. Let's get to these emails from the Daily Mail. Elon Musk's email that 3,700 Twitter employees did not want to receive just now. No nonsense billionaire fires half his staff, but promises to pay them until February as he hits out at woke activists for driving away advertisers. The funny thing is they filed a lawsuit and Elon Musk, I called this, if you listen to my morning segments, Twitter employees file lawsuit claiming mass layoffs violate federal law requiring notice. No, they don't. It just requires that when he tells you you're fired, he pays you for at least 60 days. And here's the best part. You can't work, but you still have to abide by the company policies. I'm willing to bet a bunch of these people quit and say, OK, I'd rather just leave because there's probably NDAs and a bunch of other things you can't say or do so long as you're sitting in this uh, with these golden handcuffs. But anyway, so much for their lawsuit. They say, I love this. If you're a Twitter employee, email us. Chief Twit Elon Musk has fired off a blunt email to 3,700 Twitter workers telling them they've, they're all fired, but will remain on pay, payroll until at least January as he skirts California's tough worker laws. He's not skirting them. He's abiding by them. Isn't that insane? Here are the emails. Oh, we got them, ladies and gentlemen. We got the emails. You're fired. Hello. As shared earlier today, Twitter is conducting a workforce reduction to help improve the health of the company. These decisions are never easy. And it is with regret that we write to inform you that your role at Twitter has been impacted. Today is your last working day at the company. However, you will remain employed by Twitter and will receive compensation and benefits through your separation date of February 2nd, 2023. During this time, you will be on a non-working notice period and your access to Twitter systems will be deactivated. You see that? A non-working notice period. That's called abiding by the law. Interestingly, I think he only needs to give him 60 days, but he's giving him a little bit more than that. It goes on. While you are not expected to work during the non-working notice period, you are still required to comply with all company policies, including the employee playbook and code of conduct. Within a week, you will receive details of your severance offer, financial resources extending beyond your non-working notice period, at that time, you will also receive a separation agreement and release of claims and other offboarding. There you go, man. Well, here's the other email. You're safe. Oh, here's the good one. Hello. Thank you for your patience through this transition and for your commitment to the important work you do at Twitter. We are sending this email to confirm that your employment is not impacted by today's workforce reduction. Throughout the last week, Elon has spent time with a number of employees, customers, partners, policymakers, and Twitter users. He's looking forward to communicating with everyone about his vision for the company soon. We know you likely have a number of questions, and we will have more information to share next week. In the meantime, please note that until Monday, Birdhouse is temporarily offline. Our office buildings are temporarily closed, and all badge access is temporarily suspended. Offices will reopen on Monday, November 7th. There, there's no curation team. Quick, say naughty words. That's what I tweeted. And then I said, groomer, and you can't do anything. I, I don't know. Like they got rid of their curation and moderation team. It's actually really bad. It, it, it's really, let, let me finish this email and then I'll explain. They say, thank you for the, the offices will reopen on Monday, November 7th. Thank you for continuing to demonstrate respect for impacted colleagues as we navigate these changes. As a reminder, we expect you to continue to comply with company uh, company police, company policy by refraining from discussing confidential company information on social media with the press or elsewhere. We look forward to working with you on Twitter's exciting future. Until Monday, it is kind of bad that they got rid of the moderation team, the curation or whatever this is, moderation employees and the curation team. And the reason is you may get suspended automatically by the algorithm, and there's no one there to solve that problem. I suppose if you're high profile enough and you get suspended automatically, you can uh, DM somebody or text someone famous who can then scream at Elon Musk, who will then unban you. 
But I don't think Elon is going to be sitting in the offices all weekend. And apparently the offices are closed. So I don't know who's going to be there at all. And we've seen algorithmic suspensions. So kind of worrying, to be completely honest. Now, uh, all in all, I think this is overwhelmingly just really great news. And I'm excited to see it. So uh, awesome. You know, it is what it is. It's good news, as good news as good news can get. So there you go. Getting rid of a lot of these woke people and restructuring Twitter is probably an important thing. I'd have to um, I'd have to wonder if Elon Musk in doing this had a kind of like political review of staff or some kind of psych review. I wonder, is he just firing people at random? Is it or not random, but like redundancies? Like, OK, we don't want con- content curation. We don't want moderation. We'll get rid of all that stuff. That's my question. If he didn't, if, if, if he didn't actually review these employees and know who they are and what they believe, then he's going to have a bunch of woke lunatics working at Twitter. And it's only going to it's going to be the same thing. In fact, as soon as people come back on Monday, these, these people who are there, you're still going to see sabotage. Unless he, like I don't think half the employees were woke and half weren't. I think the reality is it's a mixed bag and he's probably just terminating redundancies and cutting costs. Come Monday, he's going to open the door and you are going to see people who come in. And there you go. Now, it's really interesting news on a Friday. I wonder if he waited till Friday on purpose because it's where news goes to die. And I wonder how this will impact midterms. I think it might. I made a donation to a Republican um, because I saw an ad on Facebook. Full disclosure, it was uh, Carolyn Levitt. I saw I got I got an ad served on Facebook while I was scrolling through my memes And uh, I saw that her race actually became, um, I guess, less competitive. She's she it's it's New Hampshire's first district leaning Republican. And I looked at the issues and I said, I agree, you know, free speech, Second Amendment, all that good stuff. Oh, whatever. And I clicked on it. I thought about it for a second because I was like, look, there's like one weekday before election day. Is it really going to help to send money? Right. Yeah. You know, honestly, it is that that Monday. And that Tuesday, those are big, big days. On Monday, if information is silent or if information goes out and people wake up to what's going on, it could change things. So there's some big news in that regard. Stephen Colbert actually apologized to that dude in Dearborn, Michigan. Did you you hear about this one? Colbert goes on his show and he claims that this dude doesn't exist. Tudor Dixon, debating Gretchen Whitmer, says, There's a guy from Dearborn. He said, I don't like the explicit material in schools library. Democrats wouldn't do anything for me. So here's what I go and do. Well, Colbert goes on his show and says, it's not true. It didn't happen. But it did happen. It it, it did. He was forced to apologize. Now, that information matters, especially right now. It's very, very bad for Colbert to have to go on his show and say, oh, okay, there really was a guy who was mad about explicit books being given to children. Yeah. What do you think is going to happen when it's two million, you know, uh, person audience hears that? They're going to be like, really? They're actually doing that? I thought that was fake news. Whoa, Colbert had to issue an apology. It matters. So here's what I'm thinking. I see this uh, young Republican woman and she's running and it's starting to look favorable. And I'm like, all right, I'll make a donation, I guess. I don't know. The website, you click the button and that was and that was it. And I hope hopefully she puts it towards something good so that come Monday, there's that big push with Elon Musk firing this, the staff and there being no curation team all weekend right before the midterms. Yo, this means That if a major story like a Hunter Biden laptop drops right before election day, ain't nobody going to be there to do anything about it. No manipulation, no meddling. Whoa. And we and we may actually have a story just like this coming up in a tweet from Benny Johnson. He says Paul Pelosi opened the door for cops, did not flee or declare emergency, walked back to the attacker in the house, then was attacked. What? Uh huh. He then says the Today Show has now deleted this clip and NBC News has scrubbed it from their website because it did not meet their reporting standards. What's going on? Let me tell you, Benny and the blaze and everybody who's posting this. They may have just been wrong. Here's the question. If the story is bunk and they're lying, then they're putting out false information, right? 
Well, it's the same news organization putting out information. Something is fishy here. I'll put it that way. Their reporting on this keeps changing. All right, here we go. Let's 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 play this part so you can see exactly what was said. OK, is it not going to play now? Perhaps it won't. Let's do this. Here we when go. officers arrived here, at it in the Pelosi residence, now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. The 82-year-old did not immediately declare an emergency or tried to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant and away from police. It's unclear if the 82-year-old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and and said everything's good but instantaneously a struggle ensued as police clearly saw David DePap strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer after tackling the suspect officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi who was lying in a pool of blood what we do know is he brutally attacked Mr. Pelosi and attempted to kill him. After spending several days in the ICU, Pelosi, who is recovering from a fractured skull and serious injuries to his arm and hand, is now home where Capitol Police remain on alert. Investigators have previously said Pelosi did not know DePap when the 42-year-old broke into his home. Why? Something doesn't add up in this story. But first, why I think this story is relevant to everything we're talking about. Today's show deleted the video, so we don't know for sure exactly why they reported it. Maybe they had bad information and the reporter did a bad job. It's possible. If there was a moderation team at Twitter, they would be labeling this fake news. You would, they would disable retweets, quote tweets, shares, all of that stuff. And they would say, misleading, this is fake news. It's happened already. Jesse Kelly tweeted about counting votes after Election Day, and Twitter locked it. Yeah, his opinion. He's allowed to have it. Well, these people are gone, and good riddance. So now we have a story like this, which will be unfettered and will spread around. And there ain't nothing they can do about it because Elon's closed the office and shut it all down. I have to wonder if that was on purpose. Did Elon Musk plan this? Come on. Elon gets control of Twitter and then shuts down their curation team and misinformation team right before the midterm election? I find that very, very interesting. But let's talk about what happened here with Paul Pelosi. Let's bring it up because it matters. So they're saying in this story, which again, they've deleted, they've retracted, that Paul Pelosi greeted the officers at the door. Initially with this story, they, the cops said that an unknown person opened the door for him. Then they see Paul Pelosi and this dude, uh, DePap, and they're, they're each holding a hammer. And, they're, and then all of a sudden he, you know, rips away and then hits him in the head with it. Now the story is Paul Pelosi opened the door and then walked the cops over to DePap so they weren't struggling over the hammer. Or he walked back over. Something doesn't add up. One individual tweeted, maybe DePap didn't realize he was being set up by Paul Pelosi. Paul had secretly called the police. He said he was friends with him. It was very strange. And then when the cops showed up, he was like, right here. And then DePap realized what was happening and lashed out. Some have suggested maybe Paul Pelosi was trying not to alert the lunatic. But uh, no, 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 no. Hold on. If this report was true, that means Paul Pelosi opened the door for police and was safely by them and could have walked out of his house and said, police, please help. That man's crazy. But he didn't. He walked back over to the guy. Why? Something doesn't make sense. And that may mean NBC News just published fake news. Well, there you go. Which one, uh, which one do you think is, is, is more factual, that NBC's published fake news or that they accidentally reveal details which expose their previous fake news? Either way, they published fake news. Now, I can certainly understand it is a problem if there is bad information getting around, but I have no problem with Benny Johnson or The Blaze or anyone highlighting a video report and saying, let's ask questions about this. They've retracted it. Me telling you they reported it 
and also confirming the detail that the story was retracted. Now it's up to you to decide what you think really happened. It's not up to me to not show you the video and outright just be like, it was debunked. Well, because NBC said it was. Okay, if, if, if you're going to rely on a news organization, deleting a video and say it's fact or, or the story was fake, evidenced by their deletion of it. Why couldn't you simply then say the story is true based on their publishing of it? You see, if we're going to say that we trust NBC, then in which direction do we trust them? The initial reporting or the retraction? You can argue the retraction, I guess. I could also report that they were threatened with a lawsuit. Or I should say I can, I can opine upon the possibility that NBC publishes this story and then the Pelosi send a season, del- season desist saying it is a false statement of fact that Paul answered that door. And NBC says, we were told this by the cops, but that's not good enough and we don't want to get sued, so take it down. I mean, the Pelosi's have hundreds of millions of dollars. But anyway, I digress. Here we are, my friends, sitting on the precipice of a tremendous midterm election. Elon Musk has basically just put a stake in the heart of the vampire. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. Trump was right about everything is trending. Fascists trending. The latest updates on the war in Ukraine, Miss Argentina and Miss Puerto Rico announced they're married. Okay. Voters look ahead to the upcoming 2022 midterm elections. If he got rid of that team and everyone's locked out. Yo, what's going on? This should be interesting. When it was announced that Elon Musk was buying the platform previously, something interesting happened. The what's happening uh, tab for me turned into skateboarding. It's really weird. It's weird because I skateboard and it's weird because I don't follow skateboarding on Twitter, but it looked like something happened. So I have to wonder what is really going on behind the scenes at Twitter? Well, I suppose we could only sit back, wait and see. So in the meantime, we are uh, uh, a few days away from the midterms. We got today. We got Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and then Tuesday is election day. So please tell your friends and family, tell people to come vote. It's just the most important thing. I'll make a few important points to the doubters. I will say for those that don't have faith in the system, I hear you. I had absolutely no faith in the system. And then Donald Trump won. And then I started laughing and I was like, seriously, this guy won? Okay, wow. You know, if people went out and vote, well, voted, there'd be big changes. They did jam up Trump's first term. But Trump was able to get in three Supreme Court justices who then went on to overturn Roe v. Wade. Elections have consequences. Now, as much as we know politics is dirty and they play dirty games and there's shadow campaigns, that's what Time Magazine said, whatever they mean by it, that's what the article was called. Voting. It may not be the fastest, but it certainly has an impact. And you will not reverse 100 years of change overnight. So what does that mean? As much as politics is dirty and there's weird things going on, get your friends, go and vote, because you could have another Donald Trump moment where you get in a true outsider who then actually starts fighting with the establishment and making changes. Are you going to get everything you want? You never will. I'd love to see libertarians win, man. I'm a big fan of the Mises Caucus. We agree on so much. But I'm going to be real. Come on. I don't see them winning. And here's the reality. While the libertarians do have some overlap with Republicans, like Second Amendment and things like that, they disagree on a lot of things. There's no guarantee they're going to vote for Republicans. But right now, the MAGA Republicans, they're all, they have a lot in common with libertarians, particularly the Mises Caucus guys. It's not, it's not identical, you know, but there's more overlap than we've seen before. That's probably why we saw the libertarian candidate in Arizona drop out to endorse masters because they're saying we want the cause of liberty to win. We don't want to be a spoiler. So I'll tell you, you cannot tell a libertarian to vote for Republicans. That makes no sense. If you're a libertarian, you're a libertarian. But some libertarians, they look at their options and say, "Eh, I'm probably going to vote for the MAGA Republican because you take a look at New Hampshire with the Free State Project. And what do you get? I mean, these libertarians are running as Republicans. That means you may actually be voting for a libertarian, maybe someone like Thomas Massey. So with that being said, don't forget to check out LosingMyMind.com, our latest music video. It's a whole lot of fun. 
I'm really excited for it. And uh, if you guys buy the song, you can help us hit the charts. I I'm uh, I think we're going to do way better with this song than we did with Only Ever Wanted. Only Ever Wanted hit number two in, in, in sales. It was like number 26, 22, 16 or whatever across like alternative and rock charts. This song within two hours was in the top 10 on iTunes. And it's currently number six. It may have changed because people are buying it. So I think I'll tell you right now, we got 17,000 people watching this impromptu live stream. You guys, I really do appreciate you're here. If every single one of you spent 69 cents to buy the song on iTunes, we would displace Taylor Swift. I can't tell you that. In fact, I think the number may actually be like 3,000 sales right now. If three, if 3,000 songs sell on iTunes, Tim Cast, Genocide, I'm pretty sure that puts us above Taylor Swift. That would be really, really great, especially considering they're saying that she's like the top. She has the entire top 10 on Billboard Hot 100. Granted, she has like 100 million streams. We're not going to beat that, but at least in sales, maybe. If uh, even a small portion, about 15 to 20 percent of the people watching right now uh, bought the song, 69 cents. Um, we'll re- we'll, here's what we'll do. We'll release a song only available and it'll be uh, uh, for purchase at uh, $420.69. Uh, That'll be like our million dollar album like uh, Wu-Tang did. No, I'm kidding. We wouldn't do that. Uh, or no, how about we do this? We'll release an album, just one single signed album for that much because it'll be funny. All right, everybody, let's read some super chats. If you haven't already smashed that like button, thanks for hanging out Friday doing this uh, special stream. I'll read what you guys have in the super chats. We'll just uh, we'll read a little bit. Raymond G. Stanley Jr. Yo, what up, man? Appreciate the super chats all the time. Says smash the Friday live button. Tim, it makes sense that Alex Jones broke us free from controlled reality. Elon, now it's your turn. Killer song too. Hey, really appreciate it. Yeah, maybe maybe we'll do a, a song with the you know Elon and the takeover or something. I think the next song we're putting out is not going to be political. Uh, this song we have it's overtly political. It's basically about everything that's happening. So the lyrics are basically about lockdowns, government mandates. War, how the media lies and tries to control you and everything like that. Michael Tuft says the new song is great. Really do appreciate it. Let's uh, let's see. We got Coyle says, Tim, please check out Peter Zahan. He was on trigonometry in June. He is an expert in demographics and deglobalization. Would love to see him on IRL and see you push him on some of his points. Sounds good. Well, I'll take a look. Phil W says Don Bolduck was not assaulted. Are you going to cover this? We're actively researching it right now. So our newsroom is looking into it and I don't have enough information. There's a video going around showing Don Bolduck walking out, waving his hands. and There's a crowd of people. He then runs forward and you see two guys run up to him on his left side. He then points at one of the guys. The cops come in, push him aside, and one of the guys gets arrested. The initial statement, that's the statements that are coming out. Bolduck says that someone tried to punch him before uh, before the debate. That's what's been reported. And the video that comes out shows this guy did not try to punch him. However, some are saying that that video isn't the full context. So I don't know for sure. I can't really. I try to be careful on this stuff. All I saw so far was a video of a guy running out, a guy running up to him, two guys, and then him pointing. So I I can't really say much about it, can I? This is why when it came to the Covington Catholic kids, we got the story right. I didn't just come out and be like, whoa, look at this video. The video shows this kid up in this guy's face. I said, show me what happened before this. Show me the interactions they've had. Now, maybe there weren't any. I just don't know. So that being said, a lot of people are screaming that that it never happened. For all I know, it never happened. You know, that's all I can say. For all I know, before the debate, Bolduck was walking around and this guy got in his face and tried shoving him or something or maybe took a swing at him. And then Bolduck backed off and said, get out of here, get him out of here. But there are no cops around. For all I know, after the debate, he walks out waving his hands at everybody because he seems to be leaving the building. And then it's like, that's the guy. That's the guy. And the cops grab him. I don't know. I'm not accusing anybody of of doing anything. Basically, you've got people saying Bolduck lied about being assaulted. And then you have people saying this guy tried to assault Bolduck. Who's lying, bro? I got to investigate, but we'll see. I mean, that's the best I can do, right? Let's see what we got. Sir Neof Strife says, Tim, since you've been really getting into Civil War, the, uh, there is a podcast called Civil War 1861-1865. Rich and Tracy do a good job explaining events leading up to the Civil War. They also do a good job of events through the war. Very, very cool. 
We'll definitely check it out. We've got a long drive. We're going to we're, we're going on a little trip uh, tomorrow. I think uh, what was it Civil War 1861? We will play that on the way. I'm su- I, I'm super fascinated by the Civil War stuff. I've been to John Brown's raid headquarters, very close to where we're at, and you can read all the little signs. So it's really really interesting stuff. Let's see what we got. More people are asking for to cover the Don Bolduc story. Let me just put it this way: if he faked it, we got our we got our like it's our newsroom is on it. They're looking at other stories, they're looking at videos, and we'll try to, to the best of our abilities to figure out what happened. I don't want to come out and accuse anybody of lying. And I, once someone's lying here, right? We got to figure it out. Or someone's wrong. Someone's wrong. That's another important point. If people are putting out a video and you don't see him take a swing, it doesn't mean it's the only video. All right. Henry back to play says, Tim, brilliant. Love the new tune. Nicely, uh, nicely done, dude. Really appreciate it. Daniel Corner says, any chance for a making of video for the new song? Video looks awesome. Let me tell you, my friends, it took us, oh man, about one hour to film that video. (laughs) That's it. And then Kent, who is the video producer, started doing all of the heavy lifting. And that took him uh, um, maybe like four or five days. So uh, maybe, maybe a week. He started working on the video before we filmed anything because we knew what we wanted. We wanted news style with uh, the lyrics in the chirons, the lower thirds. And so he started pulling that footage and putting the video together without any AI singing or us in it. Then a few days later, Wombo, it's this app, Wombo.ai, where you can put someone's face in it and make them sing any song. I don't know when, it may be now, the, the, the third verse that says, we're shadows in the current enterprise of institutions made to control your lives, inside breeding and concocting all the lies that we use to control your minds. That verse will be on the app and you will be able to take any one of your favorite smear merchants, load their face into it and make them say those words. The app is wombo.ai. We hit them up and said, hey, can you can you make these these pictures sing for us? And they said, yes, we tried other deep fake techniques. It didn't work as well as their technology. We tried doing standard deep faking where you have someone sing. Then you, you run it through an app that puts someone else's face on their body. Then you've got to take the head off the body and put it on a different body. It didn't really work out. We tried. Wombos was uh, not, it, it's, we were happy with what it was. The, the AI singing isn't perfect. And we wanted that to be the case because we really do want to make sure people realize we're making fun of them and making them AI sing. And uh, it was actually possible to make it with like a more expensive higher end server system really crazy. But I, I, full disclosure, it, Wombo was really the best we could do. We tried to do other defects and it really just didn't work. It did look more realistic, but it was a lot harder to pull off to get the backgrounds right and everything like that. So ultimately we just said, nah, we're not going to do it. You know, uh, Wombo was just substantially better. And we were really excited that they were able to get us uh, uh, to, to help us with this one. And I appreciate all the people pointing out to the Tucker Tucker face that I was doing when, in, in the in the third verse there. Crazy Savior says, can't wait to re can't wait to rewatch Genocide on Mushrooms. Going to be wild. Ian's bit is hilarious. Well done, sir. My favorite part of is the end with Ian. Yeah, is Ian. The ending with Ian, I thought was really, really great. I don't want to give away too much, but definitely check out the song. All right, let's see. Nemeton says they didn't retract it, Tim. They deleted it. Also, they were directly quoting the police report. Fair point. Unless they come out and say that, uh, uh, these details are incorrect or otherwise it's not a retraction. It's just a deletion. They did issue a statement saying it didn't meet their standards. But unless they say we were wrong, hey, you know, that's important. LaSalle says this has been a crazy Friday, Tim. Looking forward to the show tonight. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Ashton Ro- uh, DeRoe says Tiffany Cross, the race hustler from MSNBC, was fired today. And she was the one who said we were in a civil war. How about that? Ryan, the eating warrior, says genocide by Tim Cast is currently number six. And Fighter by Tom McDonald at number seven. Yo, get it, Tom? Super excited. People were like, why are you putting out a song the same day as Tom McDonald? And I'm like, well, Tom does his thing. I do mine. It's not like we like called each other and said, hey, don't release a song when I'm putting a song out. Yo, shout out Tom McDonald. I'm a big fan. His songs are amazing. Super cool that, uh, my friends, you can listen to and purchase both songs. This may, this may be surprising. Uh, I don't know. I'd assume Tom is selling a song for a, for 99 cents. We're selling our song for 69 cents because um, we want sales. We want 
the song to exist in more places. We want you to have a license. I think it's like that's how it works. You get like a license. You, you own that digital version. We want people to have that. That is more valuable than the 30 cents. So buy the song. It's great. Buy, have, have it. And uh, I will stress this again, my friends, with 17,000 people watching this, you know, impromptu Friday night stream. If 3,000 people listening just right now went on iTunes, bought the song for 69 cents, we would beat Taylor Swift. That would be really awesome. All right, what do we got? Noah Calvert says, new song is the first red pill my family has been able to swallow. Keep them coming. Cool. I mean, it's, it's, it's fairly politically neutral, to be honest. Nick Yellman says, love the song, Tim. If you're doing something that will make the woke media mad, you're right over target. Sort of like what DeSantis says. It's kind of like how the GTA franchise is super profitable. Uh, my friends, go to my Twitter profile, TimCast, and look at my pinned tweet. And please read. You know what? No, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I'm going to read the, uh, uh, the uh, press release we put out. I want you to see the press release. So I'm going to read it. All right. It's kind of hard to see. Maybe I can make it a little smaller. Nope. Apparently you can't. Here's the press release for the new song. New single from Tim Pool and Trash House Records applauds Taylor Lorenz, Chris Cuomo for journalistic integrity. Genocide, Losing My Mind is the second musical collaboration from podcaster Tim Pool and former Offspring drummer Pete Parada. Podcaster Tim Pool and Trash House Records, that's what we're calling the label because Timcast Music and Timcast Records clashed and people kept complaining. And I was like, okay, okay, well, we'll find, come up with something else. And so I was like, guys, can we come up with a new name for something? Like, I don't know, like Trash House or something like that. And then everyone just went, yeah, okay, Trash House is cool. And I was like, oh, well, oh, okay, I guess. There you go. The newest single, Genocide Losing My Mind, was released today, pays tribute to the brave journalistic practices of a number of honorable reporters, including Taylor Lorenz and Chris Cuomo and Don Lemon. Watch the video here. Tim Poole, CEO of Timcast Media Group and host of Timcast IRL, said journalists today provide an invaluable service to humanity and protect democracy from fascists and anti-vaxxers. Genocide is written and performed by Tim Poole, arranged, recorded, produced, and mixed and mastered by Carter Banks. Drums by Pete Parada. Background vocals by Ian Crossland. Additional instrumentation by Carter Banks. Quote, our goal was to highlight just how important the national media is in rallying support for foreign intervention and safety lockdowns. If it wasn't for these great heroes of national media, we would have never liberated Iraq and Afghanistan, and untold millions could have died without support for strict lockdowns. Libya today is a shining example of the great work our national media does to ensure peace and prosperity around the world. Poole added, if the fascists had their way, people would have visited their loved ones as they were dying in hospitals, making the pandemic much, much worse. In case you didn't realize, this uh, press release was actually intended to insult the members of the press who received it. So I tweeted it out. Well, there you go. We have fun here over at TimCast. So uh, there you go, my friends. That's the press release. Thank you all uh, for the support. Uh, Spicy Italian says, been listening to Genocide on repeat almost all day at work so far. Watched the video during my lunch break and you guys killed it. Really do appreciate it, man. And I'll be honest with you guys. Uh, I published a couple songs. Will of the People. I dig it. I wrote it. It's a song I like. Uh, only Ever Wanted, wrote it. I like it. But I got to be honest. I like listening to, I like Metric. Uh, Lady Tron. Man, Lady Tron is just so good. I'm a big fan of Lady Tron. And, uh, you know, Muse is older stuff. I've uh, been listening to a lot of Fantagram. I like listening to those bands. I, I don't really listen to my own music. But this song we put out is actually one of the one of the first songs that I've ever completed where I'm like, I actually put it in my playlist and like listening to my own song. Like, I think the other songs are good. Will of the People did really well. Both songs charted. But uh, this song I actually have just I really do like and I'm really proud of. So I really do appreciate everybody. I'm going to wrap it up here. Smash that. Uh, Smash that like button if you haven't already. Third Eye Sag says, Tim, I think your music is more impactful than IRL. I think it hits more people of uh, more of the regular people. I have friends that never heard of you that now bought your tunes. That is awesome. I really do appreciate it. We're doing a really big marketing push. We've got some, some stuff behind the scenes. We're only getting started. It is Friday. Next week is when we really kick things into high gear. The election. 
on the 8th. It's going to be a big live party. You're going to love it. I think this song will do really, really, really well. So with your support, if y'all go on iTunes and buy the song, we will beat Taylor Swift. We need like 2,500 sales right now if uh, for 69 cents. And that puts us above Taylor Swift. Would be super cool. Now, to be, to be honest, though, you, you have to sustain that level of sales. So it's like maybe there's one big boost where we beat Taylor Swift for like three hours and then she takes back over. So it is what it is. But anyway, my friends, thanks for hanging out. We're going to have uh, Timcast IRL live up at 8 p.m. tonight. It's going to be really fun. So we'll see you all there. And uh, well, simply put, see y'all next time.